Yes. So starting on a serious note, woken up by the dogs before dawn this morning and I had this sudden thought in the midst of all my busyness and making these new rings, I, I suddenly thought I'm going to be 70 next year. I've got maybe 10 more good years working here. So why am I making rings? Well, I've got to make them meaningful and magical and everything I do. But I also want to tell my story, uh, some things that I have left untold. This is how I used to make tires. It was a little business. Uh, I used to make tire pods. Business called Entirely Recycled with the Y because we're English. And uh, Entirely Recycled used to get, uh, we actually, I actually ended up right next door to a tire shredders. And we used to have our pick of about a million tires a year. Uh, and we'd get pick one in a hundred maybe that was just I felt ideal and the best ones were the farm bike tires because they made a like a witch's cauldron shape but these ones are very practical and this is just an ordinary common or garden uh, discarded tire from the side of a tire place and uh, free for the taking of course they actually have to pay to get them shredded taken away so we will recycle this tire the old way that I started with, which before I invented a machine to turn the tires uh, and to cut the rim uh, sidewall, I used to do it all by hand. So I'll show you um, how we do it. And all you need is a coffee, half a lemon. Lemon's very good with coffee. Rind and all. No, you don't really. All you need is a strong mix of detergent and water, just enough to make it soapy, and a rag, and you you uh, put that around the wall. You see how it's not beading? That's because it's detergent. And um, so now you need a good sturdy knife that's capable of real stabbing action. So you go through the sidewall. Now. Tires are always steel belted nowadays, but the sidewalls, this is not a commonly known fact, but these are normally, uh, have no, only cloth. And um, there, there's the occasional exception that we found and it bluntens your knife like instantly. But these, you can just do this. And so I've just started it and now I'm, I'm gonna cut this sidewall out and you lift it up, you watch your fingers, you could wear gloves, but basically this knife could stab through a glove. So it's just, I just sharpened it and made sure the tip was sharp as well. And uh, this will make your uh, rim of your pot. Um, so if you want it really even, you do it real slowly and carefully. But see how easy that is to cut. And I'm pulling just a little bit. It's like like plastic. If you pull it and cut, it can uh, it, it just comes away very easily. So I'm following one of the lines here. It's about an inch or so in, um, which is good because that inward is going to go outward when it's turned inside out, which I shall proceed to do. Unrehearsed, this is live action. So in, as you get to the end, you try not to have a big overlap. That's not bad for an old fella who uh, hasn't done it for about 10 years. So now the trick, the lovely magic of knowing. I've, I've had guys twice my size and challenged them to turn a tire and they've strained and sweated and they, they've given up. They have not been able to. Whereas skinny me, I did it and it's, in the good old days, it would take me 30 seconds. Don't forget to like, subscribe, of course, um, and uh, pass on, share the message. There's a lot more where this came from. All the magic of um, possibility, things that you can change into other things. That is what creativity is. I'll just have a gulp of this. Cappuccino made here. Now, the trick is, 
you have to lean on it like this and fold it like that and that looks very unpromising but then the trick is <laughs> uh, let me see um, see it's impossible unless you know how the trick is you put your knee in and you start it off and once it's started it will it will kind of fold around itself but that's the first bit that takes a little bit of pressure I'm not going to rush it because I don't want to injure my knee but it goes around like that um, yep see <laughs> starting again okay this time that's right I used to lean on it and I'd push by weight over so I didn't do it by sheer force now it started see that it's coming round now there's no need to worry or panic you just do it bit by bit see like that and then when it gets to the other side all you have to do is um, fold it back on itself like it's sort of like wrestling wrestling with a um, python except it's not trying to kill you so there we go now it's coming round coming round and you think well is it going to come right round the trick is this is actually one of the bigger this is like a four wheel drive one so it is quite heavy duty but over it goes oh yeah it's coming back to me that's what I did see that I, I kneeled on that and then you can knock the bastard off as, as our countryman said about Everest we knocked the bastard off there we go there we go yeah so it's now wider and uh, it's got that lip which curves over so now it's a very cool thing now if you've got a self tapping screw and um, preferably something like uh, weed matting uh, what I did is I used this as the base I, I previously cut this um, roughly and not very carefully but um, basically that goes there in between the tire and the base and that gets you a thing which lets the uh, and you line them up a bit Fairly. lets the water out it lets the water out yeah precisely <laughs> so these self-tapping screws they last for years once they're in the rubber they don't really rust the head will rust a bit but so the trick is or it's not much of a trick you just you just aim at, aim for um there is a there is a there is a bead oh that, that went over the edge, so I'll go, yeah, more like that. That one might have gone, no, that one is all right. I used to do six screws, and uh, that was plenty, but you could do more. There is a very strong bead along the absolute outside. So, oh, that's a screwdriver bit. Um... So then after that, I used to take it to my little hole punch when I got set up in that outside that tire shredding place in the industrial um, uh, place down in Auckland. I uh, had my choice of about a million tires a year. And uh, oh, this is why it was a reject. See that? That's probably why it was thrown out. So we used to get that. We'd cut it off. That's one of those quick fix things. Um, that uh, don't last forever but okay so now we have 
Oh yeah, we actually have a pot. Totally usable. You can run over them. People have backed into our pots and they just spring back. Um, you can plant them with, put, a, put some good soil and potting mix in it. We used to have, we had dozens of them in a circle around in our, our, um, our utopian gardens up, up north where we built Kappa Utopia. So I used to have a machine that would punch holes, uh, two holes on each side, and then I'd put some black rope, uh, polypropylene rope, in and tie a knot, and that was the handles. But really, you don't totally need handles. And um, it's actually all right for a dog bed too. Let's see if I can get sushi in as my final parting trick. Um, is there anything else to say about them? Oh yes, if you want to paint them, you have to scrub them down really well to get rid of any, some tires are, are hopeless, they're, they're, they're shiny black silicone -y surface, but ones like this, quite easy to paint. I've tried all sorts, but it's just totally all right to use um, house roof paint, acrylic, and you can paint them bright colors soon as we painted um, painted these tires and put stencils on them with sunflowers and roosters and things suddenly they we started selling these and then i went to the big smoke and uh, got got a bit more fancy with it but basically we were doing a lot of these tires and we'd sell them off the side of the road with pot with plants or just empty so uh that is about it oh sushi Try it in your bed. Up. Okay. In here. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Oh, well.